the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm Pastor Clark. Welcome. This is St. Paul Lutheran Church. It is a gift to worship God together always. You know, this is the most dangerous time so far of the pandemic for us. Uh, And yet, uh, we have that light at the end of the tunnel of this good news of vaccines we've heard recently. Uh, So please, uh, just hang on for a little bit longer. Uh, We will be doing online worship, only online worship, through the end of middle of January. Uh, Hopefully by then uh, the situation will have improved. Um, The office during that time, the office will be open on Mondays and only by appointment the rest of the week, okay? So if you want to come in on another day, make sure you call in advance. Give yourself, you know, 24 hours or so. It's also Thanksgiving, a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I'm thankful this year for many things, including being your pastor. Uh, Thankful also for the group of people who gathered yesterday uh, to uh, share baskets, Thanksgiving baskets, uh, with people who are hungry this Thanksgiving. Um, uh, You can look forward to uh, the Thanksgiving hymn sing next week. Uh, It'll be the last for a little while, maybe maybe for a long, long while, uh, hopefully, if COVID goes okay. Uh, Since we're coming back, um, to this online-only worship. We can do some singing together, etc. So that'll, those uh, hymn sings will be integrated into regular worship now. Um, thank you uh, for investing in vacation. I was gone for uh, uh, about 10 days back in Pennsylvania. It was, uh, it was more of a work trip than vacation because I was uh, uh, helping my dad get his house ready to sell uh, and, you know, my sister was helping, and many other people were helping, uh, but it was also full of visits with him and with other people I love. Uh, so thank you. I'm grateful that you invest in vacation for your staff, and thank you also for your generosity. Uh, in these days, you've found all of the ways to give. Uh, online, um, through stpaulclinton.org, uh, in a one-time way and in an a on, ongoing automatic withdrawal. Uh, you've also mailed in your checks. Uh, you've dropped off your checks at the office, whether it's while the office is open or in the drop box that's outside, locked and secure. Um, thank you for your generosity. Um, in these days, uh, these weeks, we're um, kind of praying together, considering together what uh, our gifts will be, our our commitment uh, estimate of giving in the new year, 2021, will be. Uh, And I know I'm looking forward to the end of the Listening uh, Listening God is Calling campaign and uh, directing half of what I was giving every year to that campaign uh, back into my regular giving, back towards the general fund. You know, if if we did that, uh, if you did that and many of others of us did that, uh, we would eliminate the deficit, and that would be a wonderful thing to reinvest in the ministry that you have long uh, held a vision for, even in your budget, even though all the money for that vision wasn't there. There is a faithfulness in that. Um, So thank you. Thank you for your generosity, for prayerfully considering your generosity in the new year. Well, with that, let's pray. O God of power and might, Your Son shows us the way of service, and in Him we inherit the riches of Your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world You have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with You and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people, one from another, like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. 
And the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you from the beginning of the world, the foundation of the world. Because I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? When was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Really, I'm telling you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You that are accursed, depart into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and all his angels, because I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? And then he will answer them, Really, I'm telling you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The gospel of the Lord. The vision of the end. I mean, just imagine a, your vision, a vision of the end of this pandemic. No more masks reuniting with family and friends, back to school and church, a sense of relief. What will that relief look like for you? The joy, that recovery. Imagine it. Because it is coming. The end of this pandemic is coming. Next Thanksgiving will be better. A vision of the end is what Jesus offers us today. A vision of the fulfillment of time. This is Jesus' preoccupation in Matthew, constantly reminding us of the end in every situation, kind of describing the consequences. Faithfulness now, Jesus says in Matthew, is living now in the present, loyal to that future end. Living as if we're already there, in a sense, or as if shaping what we can shape in the now, inspired by a vision of that future. Jesus is like Moses in Matthew, making the way, leading the way to liberation, and the end is liberation. Liberation is the end. Like the end of this pandemic, the end of suffering, oppression, chaos, greed, violence, and the beginning of wholeness and joy, justice and love. The end is the kingdom. And, you know, right in that crux of that movement from end to beginning, there is this vision of judgment, a vision of accountability. This, this courtroom drama unfolds. You know, it used to keep me up at night when I was a kid. This endless preoccupation of the end, of what if Jesus comes in the middle of the night, will I be on the right side? Thank God I found mercy and grace to receive this vision of the end as a vision of what really matters to God in the end. 
hopefully too, we can all receive this vision in a way that helps us reevaluate and reorient. What is it that matters to God in the end? I mean, and is what matters to God in the end what matters to me, to us, right now? I mean, I'm much more comfortable now than I used to be with the truth that the answer to that question is yes and no. Yes and no. Not either or. What matters to God is not what matters to me now. What matters to God yeah, is what matters to me. It's complicated. There's mercy. And there's another vision here, another end that I see when I hear this story again. It's an end, a vision of the end of preoccupation with self, with myself. I mean, these people on the right hand, these sheep, I mean, Jesus describes them as people who are listening to the neighbor, who are trusting in God's mercy and are are showing up as God's mercy, who, who find themselves willing just like the king of mercy, to be found among the so-called losers and, not, and, and uh, not to be so preoccupied with themselves, so much so that they're willing even to suffer the same hunger and nakedness and being the outsider for the sake of being God's mercy. There's a surprise. Surprise! It's almost like Jesus jumping out of the cake. I mean, that surprise shows us something about both sides. I mean, on the side of the sheep, their faithfulness or obedience or or simply that freedom from preoccupation with themselves, I mean, it's shown in that surprise and how they just indiscriminately showed mercy, gave care, strove for justice. No lines, no separations, just like the sower scattering seeds just everywhere. And on the other hand, the surprise from the folks on the left, the goats, poor goats, those very same words of surprise, expression of surprise reveals such a different meaning. As if they could only be moved to mercy and to care and to justice if it could be proved that God was there or that there was an obvious reward for them. If we had known it was you, we would have served you, I can hear them saying, you, we would have served but they couldn't be moved to serve the rest. I mean, it's, they fall into a trap, their own trap, the trap of their own high standards, in a way, dividing the world into smaller and smaller boxes of worthiness, hoarding what they have until they've cut themselves off from even the king of mercy. What a tragedy. I mean, either every hungry person is Christ in disguise or no one is. I mean, even the ones who are calling every week to make sure their names are on the Thanksgiving basket list, you know, obnoxious or grateful, all Christ in disguise. I mean, every incarcerated person bears the face of Jesus or no one does. All immigrants and refugees are the living Lord or the Lord does not live. Everyone sick with COVID and dying, all who suffer, every person and creature and living thing, Christ is all in all. I mean, that's what the king seems to suggest. But even the sheep did not see Christ for who he was. So don't worry if you can't see it. I mean, they are as surprised as anyone else because faith is not seeing. It's not seeing and yet showing mercy. 
that's what the sheep did. Not separating themselves with some self-righteousness, but instead letting love unite them into a bigger we, the me dissolving into we. The goats, on the other hand, they, they fall victim to their own mercilessness. Sheep receive every humiliation as a chance to learn, to grow, to do better next time maybe, to, to show more mercy, starting with themselves. I find that the most valuable humiliations are the, are the ones when I'm revealed as acting the goat. It's the necessary way that Christ makes sheep out of all of us. These humiliations are a merciful preview of the end. Now, when I still have the chance to make a change, those were Jesus' first words in the gospel, change. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And it really has. And so now, now, at the end, that Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year, the time has come. Now is the time for setting new intentions to change, creating new daily habits and rituals, of inviting new relationships of accountability. That time has come because the King of Mercy has arrived. You know, I'm now in the phase of life where every time I see my parents, especially my dad, who's much older, every time I visit them, it could be the last time. The end. You know, especially with COVID swirling around. This vision of the end that Jesus gives us is kind of like that. There's this new awareness, this new, new clarity that gives a depth and a holiness and a meaning and a purpose to interactions with people. You know, it's that awareness that makes it possible to let go of what doesn't really matter and to hold on to what really does if this is the last time. I mean, visiting my dad at his new care facility home, it's like that. Seeing him through a window or a great plexiglass wall, seeing his confusion or what he's thinking and feeling, just the, what his body is like, how it moves and doesn't anymore. Even cleaning out his house. These were visions for me of the end, of my end, of his end. You know, I don't know about you, but the only way that I can bear that ending is in hope that the end is a new beginning. And the only thing that makes an ending a new beginning is mercy. Just like the mercy of the cross. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. 
direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of unity and reconciliation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from patterns of oppressions and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In your love, you tenderly care for your children and nurse them to health. Bring relief to all those who need healing, hope, or restoration this day. For Max, Jackie, Kelly, Kevin, Vince, Mitch, Lisa, Diane, Nancy, Pauline, David, Rick, Margaret, Mary, Dorothy, Donna, Jen, Fern, Lois, Peyton, Glory, Carolyn, Carla, Kathleen, Kayla, Jeremy, Jordan. For the homebound, Darlene, Jean, Irene, Sherry, Ardina. For those in care facilities, Edith, Betty, Barb, Marion, Bob, Joan, Evelyn, Jean, Marge, Peggy. God of healing and resurrection, make yourself known during this dangerous outbreak of COVID in Iowa and across the country. Speed the recovery of those who were found to be sick with COVID this week. Thank you for those who recovered this week and hold close the families and loved ones of those who died from COVID this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the living and dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Cookie, David, Vernetta, Sandra, Diane, Edward, Gary, and Doug. Thank you for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example that we may see your presence in those in need around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all, all creation around you, your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth just like it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil because yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thank uh you. -huh.